In gadgets number E2, I featured a very smooth running Android installation on a Raspberry Pi 3. There are quite a few steps involved in being able to achieve that, so let's dive right into it. It starts with a micro SD card that we're going to prepare for it. Not just any micro SD card, it's got to be 16 gigabytes, no less, no more. And not enough that it's a class 10 you're going to be looking for the A1 designation, which means that it was specially designed for uh, running apps. Our first stop is going to be sdcard.org, where we're going to be downloading and installing their formatter. Place our SD card in the adapter. Put the adapter in the card reader of the laptop. The built-in format tool in Windows should be relied upon for SD cards. These people are the authority on this and their formatter should be the go-to for SD cards. So our card is formatted. The next stop is Belina Etcher. Go to their site, download that software and install that on your laptop. In gadgets number 82, I told you that this Android for Pi 3 was based on Consta Kang's work, which in turn was based on a Lineage OS fork. His site is set up for donations through PayPal and uh, other uh, venues. If you think his work uh, warrants it, uh, by all means, uh, donate. I will respect his request that we do not mirror his file, so we will download it straight from his site. It's over 400 megabytes, so it'll take a little while to download. It's in a zip format, and throughout this tutorial, we do not extract the zip files. We will use them in their raw zip form. Time to run the Valina software that we installed. Locate the Lineage 16 OS that we just finished downloading in zip form. Yes, it's going to go to the SD card that's in the card reader. Start the process. We'll fast forward through some of this. That took five to six minutes. It's followed by a validation process. We'll fast forward through that too. That took another three minutes or so. There, our card is prepared. Take it out of the card reader, install it in the Raspberry Pi. Do yourself a favor and use a wireless mouse and a wireless keyboard during the installation process. Once Android is installed and complete, a Wi-Fi mouse will work just fine. Like any other Android device, first time run, boot time is going to be much longer than normal. You should be familiar with most of this and it'll finally get you to the home screen. If your intended use of Android on the Raspberry Pi does not need the Google Play Store and that you can sideload Android EPK files and that they won't need Google Play services to run, then you're golden. Your installation is complete here. If you need the Play Store or the apps that you're going to run require the Google Play services, your work is just beginning. Let's go to OpenGApps.org. We're going to choose the ARM processor. It is Android version number 9. And we will choose the lightest which is the Pico G apps that's offered. It's going to download as a zip file and we will place that zip file on a USB stick. On a normal Android device, entering recovery is usually a combination of the volume button, the home button and the power button. The Raspberry Pi has no such buttons. It's going to require us to type in two short commands. There is a built-in serial terminal within this Android build, but uh, if you look in the app right now, it's not visible. The first step is to gain developer option privileges. So that's standard where you go into the build, tap it a number of times until you're given developer options.
in developer options, we're going to do two things. One of them is that we're going to give ourselves root control. And the other is make the terminal visible. We exit. Now when we look in our apps, the serial terminal is present, so we open it. So here, please remember that the installation is not complete. It's not running fully smooth just yet. So be patient with this. Uh, you will lose uh, sight of your uh, command prompt at times. I host a folder in my Google Drive that contains two files. One of them is a text file that contains the two commands that we're going to be typing in. The first command we're going to type is SU, hit enter. If you're successful, you will see the hashtag in the command prompt. It tells us that we've achieved super user privileges. The next command is RPI3 dash recovery period SH. Hit enter. You can unplug the Raspberry Pi at this stage and replug it. If you're successful, you will boot into TWRP recovery. If it boots back into the Android system, then you need to repeat this terminal process. In TWRP, swipe to allow you to make changes. Go to install. Locate the gapps zip file that we have on our USB stick. Swipe to flash. Once complete, unplug the Raspberry Pi and replug it. The Pi will reboot right back into TWRP recovery. To be able to exit TWRP recovery, you're going to need that second file in that folder that I share on my Google Drive. It's a zip file. Put it on the USB stick and put the stick in the Raspberry Pi. Go to install. Find the file, slide to flash. Once complete, unplug and replug the Pi. It should boot into Android now. So now if we take a look at our app list, we'll find that the Google Play Store is there. Let's open that. So here again, remember that the installation is not complete. This smooth Android performance that I talked to you about has not been achieved yet. And especially here, first time uh, going to the Google Play Store is going to be a bitch. You're going to get some of this. And you're going to get a lot of that. Ultimately, you will get to this point where you can put in your credentials. The first time it loads a site, also slow. Let's do a fresh power on of the Raspberry Pi. The boot time will be very competitive with that of another Android device. Let's go to the Google Play Store. It will load up in a competitive time as well. The installation is complete. It's probably one of the smoothest Androids you will find for the Raspberry Pi. All download links are in the description. Talk to you guys soon.